Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Before I dive into today's video, I first just wanted to give a big thank you and shout out to everyone who has subscribed to my channel, liked my videos, commented on my videos. I really, really appreciate all the support. As a new content creator, it often feels like you're just, you know, sort of uploading your videos into the void. And so it's been really great to see you guys like the content, engage with it. And it's really encouraged me to film more videos. So for today's video, I have a really exciting haul for you guys from Charlotte Tilbury. So she's been having the sale where if you spend over $95 on her website, you get a free airbrush flawless foundation. And so that's this guy over here, very, very gorgeous packaging. And so I ended up on her website picking up quite a few items. So all of these guys here. So today I'm going to be using all of these new products and also some products from my existing collection to put together this full face of Charlotte Tilbury. So if you are interested in seeing some swatches, a demo of how I got this look and my overall thoughts, then just stick around. So let's first start out with some swatches. So this is the swatch of the foundation that I've let sort of dry over the course of this video. So later on in this video, you'll see what it looks like freshly applied, but I just wanted to first show you guys this and say that this is definitely not my shade match. So this is in the shade seven warm. And I was having a hard time on her website figuring out what my shade match would be. So if you have the same skin tone as me, just be aware seven warm is not the right shade match. My face definitely is looking a lot more warm and pumpkin-like than it normally would. And so in today's video, I actually mixed it with my Super Serum Skin Tint in the shade Paloma. And I think that helped a little bit in toning things down a tad bit, but it still is definitely a lot more yellow than my skin tone actually is. So for the lip pencil, I have her Lip Cheat in the shade Hot Gossip. And this was the one that was recommended as a shade match for Sweet Blossom. Awesome. So that's why I picked this up. And this is a really beautiful, warm, nude shade. So it has a bit of a peachy pink brown to it. And I think for me, it's basically just slightly deeper than my natural lip color. And I'll also just show you guys some swatches against some of my other lip pencils. So this is my Lisa Eldridge lip pencil in the shade Muse, which I would say is a bit cooler toned and a lot more pink than Hot Gossip, but this one is also kind of similar to my natural skin color. And I have my Pat McGrath lip pencil in the shade Structure, and that's this over here. So this is definitely a bit more brown and also I think cooler toned than Hot Gossip. So in case you guys have either a similar lip color or any of these other pencils in your collection, this is how the shades compare. And I have been on the hunt for a brown lip pencil, which none of these are. So if any of you guys have a medium to tan skin tone and know of a really good brown lip liner, please let me know because I, in swatching these, kind of realized I have a lot of very similar colors of lip pencils right now. And these are all beautiful, all look fairly similar to my natural lip color, but I would really like to have something a little bit different. So brown lip liner is definitely something on my wish list. Next up, I'm going to swatch Sweet Blossom just underneath this. So you can kind of see how it compares with the lip liner shade. And to me, this is a fairly unique lipstick in that it is mostly a rosy reddish pink, but it definitely is a bit warm and terracotta in undertone. So I think you can pull a bunch of different ways. Like you can definitely pull this more as like a slightly more everyday lipstick, but you could also leverage the fact that it is so reddish to make this a little bit more part of a glam look. I think it can be quite versatile for a bunch of different different looks. And personally, I must confess, I was really attracted to buying this lipstick in part because of the packaging. This is a very festive Lunar New Year limited edition package. And this is in comparison to her normal lipsticks, which are gorgeous and super chic in this rose gold packaging. But you know, obviously there's a bit more of a party happening on this lipstick tube. So I couldn't help myself but wanted to pick one of these up. Next up, we have the Pillow Talk Quad. So I know I am super, super late to this game and it is one of her best selling products. She has so many Pillow Talk themed items. So I've been wanting to try it for quite a while, but one of my early products from Charlotte Tilbury was her Darling palette. And that is also kind of a nude everyday palette from her. 
but all of the shades for that palette just pulled so, so orange on my lids. And then when I watched Michelle Wong's review, it also seemed like it pulled a little bit orange on her lids. That kind of put me off from this palette for a while, but here's to hoping that I can make these work out and they can be a nice everyday look without being too orange. I think in today's look, it is definitely less orangey than the first look I did, which ended up being very orange. So I'm still a little bit on the fence about this product overall, but I do really love the Color Story in Pan. So let me just go ahead and show you guys the swatches. So these are the four shades finger swatched. And then on the wrist, we have Prime, Enhance, Pop, and Smoke. I would say also swatched on my arm, it looks pretty true to the colors in the pan. So this shade, this prime shade, even though it looks quite white in the pan, is actually quite pink in terms of its reflect. On the lids, if you pack it onto your inner corner or your brow bone, you can see a little bit of that pink, but all over the lids in a more sheer layer, it definitely looks mostly white. This enhanced shade is definitely very pink. So I do really like that aspect of this because it's, I think, a quite unique pink shade and I don't really have another pink like this in my collection. The pop shade is pretty and it's nice. It has a very peachy undertone and a little bit of a gold reflect and I think for me that's where a lot of the orangey undertones come through because if I mix this shade with this shade the pink in this and the gold in this kind of together read very bright orange on my lids which is Honestly, not my favorite. I like orange palettes, but not if I'm trying to go for this color story. And then finally for the smoke shade, this is also a shade that on my lids pulls pretty orange. I would say overall, you know, based on the swatch, it's a mid-tone brown with a strong peach undertone, but on my lids, it definitely doesn't provide a ton of depth and does bring a little bit of that orange to the party. So before we go into the look, I also did just want to quickly swatch this against Star Aura. These are very, very different palettes and color stories, but I think they both serve a somewhat similar purpose of an everyday Charlotte Tilbury pretty pinky look. So I wanted to just swatch them in case you're debating between these palettes so you can see how different the color stories are. So Star Aura is a lot more neutral in undertone, whereas I feel like on me at least, Pillow Talk runs pretty warm and there's definitely a lot more of an orange undertone to Pillow Talk. Star Aura also just has a lot more shimmer in the formulation so pretty much all of the shades have at least some shimmer whereas in Pillow Talk you have two mattes and then a shimmer and a pop shade. So overall they are very different color stories but I think they're two palettes that you can use for similar purposes in terms of a nice everyday very pretty soft glam look. So without further ado let's dive into the demo of how I got this look. So the first time I tried this foundation it made my face look way way too orange. So today I'm going to try mixing it with a little bit of my Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint in the shade ST9 Paloma. So this is just a tad bit too light for my skin tone so I'm hoping these will kind of balance each other out. So let's try to make some sort of custom cocktail. Just for reference for you guys this is what the foundation looks like and I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand just so you can see it there as well. So definitely a little bit on the orangey side for me. And this foundation also does oxidize to be a little bit deeper. So if you do happen to manage to try one of these in store, be aware of that because it might look fine when it first goes on your face, but it will get deeper. And so we'll keep an eye on this and that's part of why I'm leaving the swatch on my hand. So now let's just add a drop of this as well and kind of mix it together and and see if we can create a good custom cocktail. That's just one drop in there. I'm gonna mix this guy together. Okay, I think that's still a tad bit deep, so I'm just gonna add another drop in here. Okay, still, I think it's closer, but just to be safe, I'm gonna add a little bit more because the last time I tried this product, it was not good. Very, very, very orange. So eh, I feel like it's kind of getting there, maybe one more drop. I will admit at this point, it's gonna be sort of half and half between the two products. And so the finish is going to be a little bit different than if I had just used the foundation. I do have experience putting just the foundation on my face. So I can tell you guys my thoughts and impressions about the foundation based on that previous experience. So I think this is probably roughly as light as we're gonna get it. I feel like it's not getting that much lighter. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and dot 
got this around my face and this is actually now a lot of product because I did a full pump of the other one and many many droplets full of the Ilia. I still feel like it's a little bit orangey on the face so oops that was a little much but let's just go in with my beauty blender now and try to blend this out but yeah you can see i feel like now it looks slightly less orange and just very yellow i do wonder if i would be much better served by getting one of the less warm shades i often do have this problem with base products where even though i consider my skin to be relatively warm in undertone i feel like oftentimes for this area of kind of the medium skin tone range. If you're not careful, it'll just look either like banana cream or like pumpkin cream because the kind of yellowy orange undertones just tend to be really strong whenever they make a warmer product. So if you have a skin tone like me and you have a really great foundation match, please let me know because I also experienced this a little bit with the Fenty foundation. I first tried 220, which was just too yellowy on my skin and I was also too light. And then I went with 210, which was still light, but slightly better in terms of undertone, but it was definitely too cool. So I don't know. Okay, yeah, looking at this on my face, I definitely feel like this is still way more yellow than what I would like. So yeah, I might have to go and try to exchange this for a cooler undertone. I wonder if they do exchanges given that this was technically a free gift with purchase. I put some of this on my eye. I normally don't do this, but I feel like because the shade match is not super great, it's probably helpful just to even out how things are looking on my face. Don't want to have reverse raccoon eyes with just white circles around my eyes. Alrighty, so here we have the foundation on and I basically ended up using half and half of these two products and I would say that it definitely made it a little bit better. Like this product definitely took down the depth a little bit. So it was a little bit less orange and a little bit more yellow. So this is definitely not the right shade match for me. But just so you guys know, in case you do have a similar skin tone to mine, the warm might be too warm. So, you know, unless you have like a really strong orange undertone to your skin, this just might be a little bit too much. In terms of the overall finish, what I'll say is that with just this product on, so when I only use this, I did feel like I got a pretty nice, very skin-like natural finish. So I think this is supposed to be more of a matte, soft matte foundation, but I found it to be pretty comfortable on the skin. I didn't feel like it was drying out my skin at all, and it didn't really leave any additional radiance. Mixing it with the Ilia though has definitely given it a bit more shine. So I still overall like the finish. In terms of the coverage, I'm actually quite impressed with how much just one pump of the foundation and several droplets of this gave me in terms of covering up any sort of hyperpigmentation. Because the first time I used it with just this, I felt like I actually needed to use sort of two pumps in order to cover everything up. I don't feel like I need any more coverage on my skin, which is good because just one pump seems to be going quite a long way. So now let's go into the lips. So I have here the Lip Cheat in Hot Gossip. I'm just gonna quickly line my lips with this. So there it is all around the perimeter of my lips. Overall, I would say this lip liner shade is more or less just kind of a deeper version of my natural skin color. So I think it provides pretty natural definition on my lips and it's probably a good pairing for any sort of nude or rosy toned lip. So now let's go in with the star of the show. So Sweet Blossom here. Very, very gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all over my lips. There we go, so that's Sweet Blossom on the lips. And I think this is a really perfect pairing with Hot Gossip, since Hot Gossip is a fairly similar color, but just a little bit deeper than Sweet Blossom. And so they really go well together. And before we go into the eyeshadow, I just wanna quickly show you how this swatch is doing on the back of my hand. So as you can see, as this foundation dries down, it definitely becomes a lot deeper. And there I say, just like more orangey so the original swatch is just like maybe a little bit more yellowy than my natural skin tone but definitely as it dried down it became a lot more orange and brown compared to my natural skin tone in case you're seeing my face change over the course of this video this is basically what's happening but anyway let's now go into the most anticipated part of today's video at least for me which is this pillow talk quad so to start today's look i'm gonna go in 
with the prime shade and my Wayne Goss number no. six brush just to sweep this all over my mobile lid. And also I guess kind of set some of this foundation which keeps creasing on my lid. And when I tried this the other day, I was quite impressed with just how shimmery this prime shade is. It looks pretty plain in the pan, but you actually can get quite a lot of reflectivity from it. So there we are, just a nice subtle wash of prime all over the lids. And I would say it is a lot more subtle all over the lids than I anticipated. The first time I used this palette, I just put prime in my inner corner and brow bone area, and I found a pretty high impact in those areas. I guess on its own, just on the lids, because it doesn't have much pigment, it doesn't really give you a ton of impact. So now let's go in with Enhance on a Wayne Goss number 16 brush. So let's try to bring some pink to this party. And I'm being generous with this shade because I really, really want the ultimate look to have more of a pinkiness instead of a orangey brown. Alrighty, that's a pretty cute duo. I think actually these two colors, if you were going for a really subtle but pretty pink look, would go quite well. So now with my classic crease brush, I'm gonna go into the smoke shade. I'm gonna try to add a little bit more depth in just the outer corner area. So similarly to last time when I used this palette on this eye where I have a little bit of texture, my outer corner. I do feel like it catches a little bit there, emphasizing that texture. Since it's a light enough shade, it's not that big of a deal, but just wanted to flag that because especially if you do have more textured eyelids, I think this might be a little bit more of a problem. Finally, for this pop shade, and I'm just gonna apply this with a finger all over the middle of the eyelid. Maybe actually bring in the inner two thirds. There we go, so that's the lid done. And so far I am enjoying this a lot more than the last time I used this palette. So the last time I used this palette, I put this enhanced shade all over the lid. So there'd be more of a pink base to the pop shade. And I think that ironically made it more orangey because the pink in this mixed with the gold of the pop shade came across very strong as an orange. But so far I'm seeing this less as an orange, which is good because I am trying to keep this more as like a nude pink look. So now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna start with my ESMG 27 in this enhanced shade and just pull this all over the lower lash line. And using that same brush, I'm gonna go into smoke and put this on the outer third just for some more definition. And then cleaning off that brush, I'm gonna see if I can pick up the pop shade. So I tried this with my Wayne Goss number no. five last time and it was kind of tricky to pick up. Okay, yeah, still a little bit tricky. I would say if you're used to using Pat McGrath's glitter topper shades, like her Blitz Astral shades, I prefer that formula to this pop shade because those are just a little bit easier to pick up both with a brush and a finger. This is definitely a much more subtle glitter topper and you need to build it up a lot more. Like even on the lids, I had to go over it multiple times with a finger. And I feel like this is not picking up very well with a brush. All right, switching gears. Let me see if I use this instead on the lower lash line, whether that is better. Okay, yeah, I think if you wanna brighten up the lower lash line, this is a better shade to go with. I do think this shade should exclusively be applied with a finger or a finger-like brush in layers on a larger surface area. Or maybe if you wet your brush, you can get this to work on a small surface area like the lower lash line, but it is a little bit tricky with a dry brush. Now with the eyeshadow done, I'm gonna go and put on some eyeliner and then I'll be right back. So I have here my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Tan and my Ruffer number no. 4 brush. And so I'm just going to use this to bring some more definition back to my face and also kind of see how these products layer. I usually just pr apply this bronzer to bare skin. All right, layering decently well. It's interesting because I feel like this bronzer comes across as a lot deeper now that it's layered on top of this foundation. I guess because this foundation is like a little bit deep and orangey on me and combining it with the bronzer is making it more so. And then using that same brush, I'm going into my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Intense Cheek to Chic. And I'm gonna just kind of put in both the middle and the outside portions so we get a little bit of that pop shade as well. Sweeping this all around my cheekbones. These are pillow talk, should go with pillow talk. 
And then I don't have a highlighter from Charlotte currently. So I'm going to try going in with my Artist Small Brush from Wayne Goss into this prime shade over here and seeing how that works as a cheek highlight. Ooh, that actually works decently well. Huh. And then with my Sonia G Mini Booster, I'm going to use this prime as well, just on my brow bone and inner corner. So here we are with the finished look. Let me know what you guys think. So in terms of my overall thoughts about these products, first starting with the foundation, I would say that I like the finish of this foundation. It is quite nice and skin-like in my experience. It is nicely buildable, very comfortable on the skin, doesn't really feel like you're wearing anything. But the shade match for me is very, very bad. As you can see here, it is way too dark, way too warm toned. And so I'm gonna see if I can get a different version of this, one that is a better shade match for me. I was hoping that by mixing in this product, I would get something that is more or less my shade match. But unfortunately, I think even with the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, it's still too yellow on my skin. The warmth just reads too much as a yellow orange. So unfortunately, I think I can't really make this work well for me. I might though try to see if I can get something in a similar depth, seven, but a different undertone, just because come spring and summer, my skin tone will definitely deepen. This is probably the lightest my skin will be for the whole year. Next up, we have the lip cheat. And overall, I think this is a pretty solid product. It glides on very nicely on the skin. I can't really speak to longevity yet because I haven't worn it enough, but I think it's a beautiful color, really nicely natural on my lips. As I mentioned at the beginning, I am hoping though to diversify my lip pencil collection. These are all pretty similar when you put them on the lips. And so I'm on the hunt for a nice brown lip liner. If any of you have recommendations, please let me know down below. But overall, very solid and definitely matches with Sweet Blossom. Speaking of Sweet Blossom, I love, love, love this packaging. I honestly think it looks a lot more beautiful in person than in a lot of the pictures. My primary motivation for this haul was to pick up this lipstick. And I would say on the whole, this is probably the one product I am very glad that I picked up the rest I could kind of take it or leave it but I think this is a really gorgeous shade that is quite unique and versatile it might just look like a very simple rosy red but I think it actually has quite unique undertones the one critique I have of this and this is more of a thing with Charlotte's kissing formula it does transfer on your teeth a lot so even if you do the trick where you put your finger in your mouth this lipstick still has the tendency to just migrate around it's kind of a trade-off in that the kissing formula from Charlotte Tilbury is extremely extremely comfortable, so I really like that aspect of this, but because it is so creamy and emollient, it also does have a tendency to get on your teeth, and so if you're wearing this, just make sure to regularly check on that, especially if you're talking a lot, it's very likely to get on your teeth. Finally, we have Pillow Talk, and this I would say is the item I am most on the fence about right now because I am quite picky with my eyeshadows. I do have a lot of eyeshadows in my collection. And so this one is just really not blowing me away right now. I think it does provide a pretty look on the lids, but I honestly think for me personally, I actually prefer the look that Star Aura gives me. And you guys know I'm also on the fence about Star Aura. So this is, you know, not super great. Like I'm really glad I tried it out because this is just such an iconic palette and I might even just keep it for that reason so I can give you guys comparison swatches. But overall, I would say this is probably not the best palette to get if you have more of a yellow or warm undertone to your skin just because it does read very orange on the lids. And I mean, if you really like that orange, then sure, that's fine. But like if you're buying this palette because you really like this color, story and you really like the way it looks on people with cooler undertone skin, you're probably not going to get that on your own complexion. At least that's kind of where I am right now. I feel like I really liked how this palette looked on say Mel Thompson's complexion where it is much more of that pinky nude color story. On mine, it's pretty, but again, just like a little bit more orangey than what I would go for. And the orange just 
makes things a lot less unique in my book compared to my other eyeshadows. In terms of the quality, I would say overall I am quite pleased with that. This prime shade I think is really excellent as an inner corner highlight and a brow bone highlight. It is not really anything to write home about as a shade all over the lids, though it does provide a good base to this pop shade. This enhanced matte shade is really nice, performs super well, no complaints there. For the smoke shade, both times that I've used it, I have had some issues with it emphasizing texture and catching on the outer corner of this eye. And so I'm not a huge fan of that aspect of it, given that, you know, we only have four colors and this is the only deeper shade. And then for the pop shade, it is a really pretty formula and I think is very vital in this palette for giving you a bit more of a shiny effect but I would definitely prefer the Blitz Astral shades of Pat McGrath to this formula because I feel like this is really hard to use on a brush and even with a finger it kind of takes some layering on. So if you want just like a few glitters on your lids, then sure, I think this formula might be slightly better than Pat McGrath's. But for me personally, I like to have just a little bit more impact. And so I personally prefer the Pat McGrath formula. So there we go. Those are all of the products. And if you guys have any experience with these products, please let me know your thoughts below. And in particular, if you have recommendations for lip pencils or for other Charlotte Tilbury quads, please let me know as well. I really do love Charlotte's products overall and have been enjoying expanding my collection of her products. But <laughs> as you can see from today, I'm still struggling a little bit in terms of finding the right color stories for my complexion and the right shade matches. So I'll keep you guys posted as that evolves. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video and if you haven't already I would really greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye!